we got it taught God had the order of Melchizedek because it tends to involve understanding the Godhead of what's involved in that. I mean, we've got several titles that with subtitles under that, and the subtitle under this one is the order of Melchizedek. And um, there's a misconception among religions of our day and time that Melchizedek himself was Jesus Christ or God, and uh, but he wasn't. And there's a couple of scriptures they look at that if you just, like I said, if you don't understand the Old Testament writings, a phase, a, a, a prophecy here and there won't make sense on some things. And uh, you'll see it when we read through it, what Paul wrote. God had the order of Melchizedek. Let's start Genesis 14, verses 18 through 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. You even see Melchizedek said, Blessed be the Most High God. Well, like Jesus says in certain statements that you see in the New Testament. But uh, I'm going to tell you, there are religions today, if you hear them mention Melchizedek, if you listen closely, they're trying to say he, he was Jesus Christ back in the Old Testament that appeared. Or they'll say he was God. And they'll use the scripture text, and we'll get to it in a minute, uh, where that Melchizedek blessed Abram. And Abram is the heir of God. And in the scripture in Paul writing, the less is blessed of the better. So Melchizedek is actually saying it's better than Abram. That's why they say he was God. I guess that's why they say that. Anyway, you remember the Genesis account. Five kings against four kings. They took Lot captive. Remember those little stories we read in Genesis. Lot was taken captive. Abram wasn't even called Abraham at that time. His name wasn't changed. And he was going to go and get his nephew. Uh, Abram still lived in Sodom. And there was Sodom and Gomorrah. And I've got all the towns involved. There was four kings against five kings that warred. Abram got his men together and went after Lot to get Lot and he defeated those people and came back to Salem. Now I'm personally in all the uh, the historical documents and uh, what you call them dictionaries, not dictionaries, uh, commentary, Bible things. Anyway, they say that Salem was Jerusalem and I believe that. Because you've got J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. Salem is in that word. I don't know if that means that or not, but Melchizedek was the king of Salem. And after Abram come back from that battle, that war, he come out there with bread and wine, and the Bible said he was the priest of the Most High God. Now that does tell me that God still had his eye on Salem or Jerusalem even in those days before Abraham even got started good. That God had the place picked out. Had a man that was the king there and he was the priest of the Most High God. But here's what you need to catch note of. He is not, Melchizedek is not of the lineage of Abram. Now that's very, very important to understand. This man was not born from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and so on. Even though Abram lived in Ur of the Chaldees for a while, which is Babylon, 
and they worship pagan gods and God spoke to Abram and said, get away from your mom and dad and your brother and all around you and I'll take you to a place. And Abram went and didn't know where he was going. Remember all that? And Abram took off on the journey and after he got kind of settled in that area is when they had this battle. Now Chazedek was the king of the city of Salem. He was also called the priest of the Most High God. So, God had a priest there. Was not of Israel, was not of Abraham, but he was just, Abraham at one time would be classified as a Gentile in early Chaldees. When God pulled him out and separated him, then that began to separate Abrahamic seed from the rest of the world. Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. His twelve sons produced other children, and they became the nation of Israel, separate from the rest of the world. But Melchizedek was also separate from Abraham, so he too was basically a uh, Gentile. In other words, there was no Israel. There was no country that they said, this is God's nation. None. But he was the priest of the Most High God and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. So he didn't know the true God, the possessor of heaven and earth. And Melchizedek said, Blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him tithes. And that's why you read in the New Testament, that Abraham paid tithes and he went to Melchizedek. So that's where that starts. Uh, I meant to change this where y'all can read it. I didn't make it big enough, but I'll have to point out and tell you what they are anyway. It's not very plain at a distance. So here's a timeline. Here's 2000 B.C. before Christ. Here's 1800 B.C. before Christ. 1471 was when the law was given in Mount Sinai right here. Okay, you go way back here to Abraham, right after the flood. The flood happened approximately in the year 1556. Uh, so about three or four hundred years before Abraham was born was when the Noah's flood was. Well, when Abraham lived in his time, just like while we live now, uh, I can't think of that man name in China that rules China, but he's alive the same time I am. So is Chavez in uh, Venezuela and, and uh, what's that guy in Iraq and all them other places. They're living where we are. The same thing. Abraham in his day, Melchizedek was alive during his day. Okay, and in the process of time, Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. And uh, Jacob begat the twelve sons of Israel. And one of them was Levi. I've got Levi. I ain't got the rest of them mentioned because it's through the order of Aaron that we're looking at right here. You're, we're going to read the scriptures in a minute. It talks a difference where it's be the, the order of Aaron or the order of Melchizedek that Jesus is called to be high priest of. Okay, so here we got Jacob begat Levi. And actually, Levi begat Kohath, Kohath begat Amram, and Amram begat Aaron and Moses. So you see the timeline as it goes on during this time. Then you come to the year 1471 years before Christ. Aaron and Moses go to Mount Sinai. Moses does. And God speaks the Ten Commandments and gets the law written of the Old Testament. Now, the Bible said before the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. However, God had a high priest back here in Abraham, they call Melchizedek. The order, if you was born from the uh, Jacob begat Levi and the other 11 tribes of Israel, 12 tribes told. You remember how that if you were the tribe of Levi and you were a man, 
You didn't have no choice of what your life would be. If you was a son, you would automatically be a Levite minister. You didn't have to wait and say, Oh, I want God to call me to preach. I want God to call me to work in the temple. You know, somebody in Judah, somebody in Simon, somebody in Issachar could have said, Mama, I'd like to be working that temple like, Son, you can't. You've got to be a Levite. That is the order of Aaron. <clears throat> and Aaron's sons work in the temple area. And we ain't got all the listing down of that, but Aaron's sons worked as the priest. And the high, Aaron was the first high priest besides Moses. He put on the uh, garments. His four or five sons put on garments and ministered. And uh, Aaron was a uh, priest. And then after that, they had a high priest. And I guess the reason they had two, because Moses was pacified, he would go into the place and sprinkle the blood on the, in the Holy of Holies and things like that. But they were all Levites. And the order of Aaron, Aaron's sons had to be ministers and do a certain job in the temple as priests. And then when they had sons born, their sons didn't have no choice. They had to do that. And then their sons had to do that all the way down the line. So that's what's called the order of Aaron. Well, Melchizedek was not born from Abraham or any of these. He was separate way over here, but yet he was the priest of the Most High God. He was called of God wherever he was to be a priest. And Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. So Melchizedek had no law. Hebrews 7, 1 and 2, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. And that was the role and ministry of the high priest Melchizedek. Hebrews 7 verses 3 through 5. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. People read that and say, what? Melchizedek had to be Jesus Christ. He had no father, no mother, no descent, no beginning of days or ending of life. That's God. That's the way they look at that. Now you know the difference. I've heard them do it. And you have too. But you've got to understand what the goal and aim of this right here is about. It's talking about the lineage descent of the order of Aaron and Melchizedek did not have that. Now we'll show you more as we go. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, about us a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily they that are the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren, though they be come out of the loins of Abraham. Okay? Melchizedek lived before the law. The law was given in Moses' day. So in Melchizedek's day, there is no law. Not from Mount Sinai. That didn't happen to... What, about 600, 500 years almost from Abraham and Melchizedek to 1471 when the law was given in Mount Sinai? The Bible said there was no law prior to that. 
There was no commandment saying thou shalt not steal, kill, and all that. It went by just your conscience. And Paul said when the commandment came, then when you done wrong, you knew it. When you're driving down the road and you don't see no speed law and you might have missed the sign and you're driving and driving and driving and driving and you say, man, I wish I knew what it was. I don't want to get no ticket. Well, if there ain't no nothing posted, cop wants to stop and say, look, now, there's no sign on this road. If they check back somebody stole it, the judge is going to say, you can go. They were, it wasn't posted. But when you have a sign and a posting, and then you break it, it's different. Same thing with the law given on Mo in Moses' day. Melchizedek lived and did not have the law of Moses to live by. He didn't have no law. There's a scripture I want to get back to. We'll, we'll, we'll hit it in a minute. Then he got to it yet. But he whose descent is not counted from them. See, we showed you Melchizedek is not born from Abraham. None of them. Melchizedek, whose descent is not counted from them, received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. The only thing you can see into that is that God blessed uh, Melchizedek. He was a priest of the Most High God. And here... Right down here, men that die receive tithes. But there he received them, of whom it is witness that he lived. And as I may so say, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. That's what Paul said. I don't know how you say that. Uh, your son ain't been born yet, but since he ain't been born yet, he's still part of you. He's paid tithes because you pay tithes. Maybe something into that, huh? You pay tithes, your children can be blessed. Levi received tithes and paid tithes in Abraham. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. The less is blessed to the better. We're showing you how great Melchizedek was before God. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. When we showed you Mount Sinai, uh, where they met, that's where they received the law through Moses on Mount Sinai. If perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, what further need was there that another priest should rise? Ain't that right, Mom? What further need was there that God would raise up another priest after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Why couldn't God just call somebody through Aaron? But he picked out somebody like Melchizedek. You know, Hebrews chapter 5 tells us that Jesus Christ was called of God to be a high priest. And he's the tribe of Judah, not Levi. That's something else to look at. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, another priest, and not be called at the order of Aaron. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Now don't read into that, Mr. Babylon, that it's a null. Paul straightened that out, Romans 3.31. Do we make void the law through grace? He says, God forbid we establish it, the law. And Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. And Jeremiah said, I will take the, my laws and write it in their heart. 
Up to that time, you tacked them on a plaque and put them on your doorpost and stuff like that, which is still good to do. But the priesthood was changed. There's made a necessity, a change also of the law, for he of whom these things are spoken pertains to another tribe, which is Judah, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Nobody in the tribe of Judah worked in the temple and done these sacrifices and things, high priest or nothing. It was Levites. But Jesus is born of the tribe of Judah. And he is called after the order of Melchizedek. Look at Numbers 4. Verses 34 through 35. And Moses and Aaron and the chief of the congregation numbered the sons of the Kohites after their families and after the house of their fathers from 30 years old and upward even unto 50 years old everyone that entereth into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. That's why Melchizedek did not have father or mother a beginning of days or ending of days of life in reference to his high priest ministry. He didn't have to have a mom and daddy that was a Levite. Because they what? He didn't have to have a law saying you got to be 30 years old when you start and 50 when you when you get 50 you got to quit. Majestic didn't have that law. The order of Aaron had this law. Here's that law. Every minister began at 30 and quit at 50 that worked in the tabernacle of the congregation. That's the law it's in reference to. Without father, without mother, without descent. He was not of the descent of uh, Abram and Levi. He was not bound by that law that about the beginning of days at 30 years old and ending at 50. He did not have to have a father or a mother that was a Levite because they what? There was even no Israel at that time. That's where Melchizedek was. And Jesus Christ was called to be a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. You find that also in the Psalms of uh, David in one place. I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's chapter 2. I don't have it down, but I think it's chapter 2. And it's where God called him to be a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Talking about when Jesus would be born and come along. The son of David. And so he's called after the older majestic. Now Jesus did do one thing. He began at the age of 30. But. Now he crucified three years later. But he's still the high priest. And uh. I don't know if he was in reference to being a high priest at the age of 30 or not, but I guess he could have been, but I don't know he, pro he was a prophet. And, uh, but he didn't begin his ministry until he was 30 years old. You read that in Luke. But he was called, Jesus Christ was called after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Aaron. That's why he didn't have to abide and there was a change made of the law. He was not a Levite. He was a tribe of Judah. And he was called of God to be a high priest. Hebrews 5 verses, I think 5 through 10. You read that, it tell you that he was called of God to be a high priest. Or be priest. That Christ was called of God. And uh, Hebrews 7, 14 through 19. It is yet far more evident. For that after the similitude of Melchizedek. There ariseth another priest. He said it's far more evident. Paul said. That after the similitude of Melchizedek. Just similar to when Melchizedek was a high priest. That God is going to call another one. There arises another priest. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment. Not the Levitical priesthood law. Not the order of Aaron. 
but after the power of an endless life. When God raised Jesus from the dead, He put Him, according to Paul, Hebrew 9, 24, <clears throat> He's entered into the holy place. <clears throat> Paul told Timothy that Christ abides in the light that no man can get enter into, or you can't get there. Christ is in the light where no man can enter. The only way you can have access to the Almighty God is through Jesus Christ. He's the high priest. It didn't say he was God. Jesus Christ said, if you will love me, keep my commandments, I will pray the Father, in other words, for you. All power is given to me. Paul said, God is the head of Christ. Christ is head of the church. Once you're called into the church, Christ is your immediate head. When you pray, you call on Jesus Christ. God said, let them call on that name. Jesus said, I will intercede for you. I will make intercession for you to the Father, which is our God. And when you get in the spirit of prayer and pray in the Holy Ghost, you have access through Him to God. And that's why He tells us to pray in the Spirit. How many has ever prayed after you get the Holy Ghost, you get in a closet prayer somewhere and you pray and you cry and you pray and you just feel the glory of the Spirit of God so strong. When you do that, Jesus said, what did he say about you'll go in and out of this pasture and find what for your soul? How do you say that in the New Testament? He said, I'm the door. No man can come any other way except come through him. When you start calling on God through Jesus Christ and you pray and you pray and you pray until you get into the Spirit. Because the Spirit searches the deep things of God, then you have access to the Father through the Holy Ghost. And the ministry that Jesus has set forth, you have that contact made and you enter into the presence of God through the Spirit, not your flesh. Your flesh feels the effects of it. I bet I ain't too many Pentecostals pray like that. They're not taught that. <laughs> we teach it here, and I think some folks here don't even believe that. If you get in your closet and pray, you speak in tongues. But when you go home, sit down, and do everything else, you ain't going to. If you don't ever get in your closet and prayers and pray, privately between you and the Lord, you won't never, never, never enter into that place. That's why it's good if you want the keys sometime, come down here and pray when ain't nobody around. And you pray and get into that place. And once you get into that place, you won't want to leave. Not right then. You wait till the Spirit kind of subsides some and then your old flesh, tired feeling comes around. But while you're there in the Spirit, you ain't no way you want to quit right then. Feel too good. Well, anyway, he was called after the similitude of Melchizedek, this high priest was, and he was not made after the law of a carnal commandment, but the power of an endless life. Now, Paul said in Romans, what, either 10 and 6 or 6 and 10, <clears throat> that Christ died in the sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. He's in the presence of God and we He is the high priest and He is, has the power of an endless life. No more death facing Him at all after He once He was crucified and God raised Him from the dead. For He testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Paul wrote that down. I think He got out of the Psalms of David. 
He testified, you are a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek, for there is barely a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. That's what a lot of them think it was done away with. Oh, covenant was, but not his laws. Because verse 19 sums it up. For the law, talking about the law, the old covenant law, of sacrifices and all that kind of stuff. What did it say in one place? The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. The law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Now anybody don't believe in perfection ain't read that enough. The old covenant could not make people perfect before God. When any preacher that comes out of a denominal church, and that's what happened to UPC more than anything else, they had Methodists and Baptists and whatever else. They come out of whatever they were in and got baptized in Jesus' name and brought their mental concept of what they've been raised about imperfection and they get in there behind a pulpit and they say, is anybody here perfect? Insinuating that you will never be like Jesus. That is a false minister to do that. Because Jesus said, be ye perfect as the Father in heaven. If you're as perfect as the Father, that's perfect as God. And then not only that, Paul said, <clears throat> how did he say it was that a, can't quote it verbatim here but you know what I'm talking about <clears throat> while you're going through your life even with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus name you fight against sin you get knocked down you fight against sin you get knocked down but finally you know where Paul wrote if you read that text in uh, Corinthians 10 that once you get to the place and fulfill your obedience he says, then you can take vengeance upon your disobedience. Well, who caused you to be disobedient? It was Satan. It was demon angels that made you fail God, even after you got the Holy Ghost. See, they get to that part, but they don't want to step on over. You keep fighting in this fight. The Bible said the bringing in of a better hope did make perfect. The fivefold ministry is for perfection of the saints. That's why they'll never get nowhere having just pastor, teacher, evangelists and a hierarchy headquarters that ain't called probably. Because they're copying from Mystery Babylon, these denominations are, even including some of the oneness folks. They come out of a church that had an organization, headquarters and everything, and somebody was president of the board or whatever, and they got together and decided, well, I think our preachers need to preach this right here. When they didn't even, wasn't even in a place to preach. They draw up Sunday school books, and I guarantee you right now, and most of them tomorrow in the UPC, tomorrow they have that little handbook open up and the same UPC in California and the same one in New York have the same lesson, and they'll try to teach and preach. When uh, the one in New York may not need to hear the same thing the one in California needs to hear. And first of all, they don't need to be having no Sunday. That's another one though, isn't it? It's when you get to that place, the law made nothing perfect, the bringing in of a better hope is by the which we draw nigh to God. That's cause of that high priest we've got. We go to him, we talk to him, and we get, start getting our lives in order by the Word of God. Praise the Lord. I think that might be. No, we still got some more. Hebrews 7, 20, verse 23. Inasmuch, for inasmuch, as not without an oath, he was made priest. Talk about much as it. Without an oath. He was by the law, or Aaron was. 
Let me read it again. For inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said to him, The Lord swear and will not repent, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The other priests of Aaron were priests without an oath. I think that's what it's saying here. If you look at it, right? They didn't have an oath coming from God. They just, all they had to do was be born a Levite. They had the law standard set up on down through the generations of time. But it said, but Melchizedek was made priest, uh, not without an oath, was made priest. And it said concerning, I guess, Jesus himself as well. The Lord swear. God swear and will not repent and change his mind. When he spoke this to Jesus Christ, you are a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek, God spoke this to the Son of God, Jesus Christ. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they, the Aaron priesthood, were, they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of what? Death. Everybody had to die. Another one would rise up and be a priest. But this man, talking about Jesus Christ, Paul did not say, but this God. But this man, because he continues forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Now I don't know if ones around here claiming, but I do know that they had a big world religion meeting and the Roman Catholic Church tried to say the Muslims are saved because they believe in God. I'm going to tell you, I like the Jewish people. But the Jewish people will not be saved if they don't do like the Jews did in Acts 2. I don't care who they are in town. If they don't start calling on Jesus Christ and get born again, they are still lost. The Muslims don't even believe that Jesus is the Messiah either. They're lost. But it says of the high priest, Jesus Christ, he is able to save them to the uttermost. The coming of God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I don't know why the one just can't see something in it besides scared of Trinity. I'm scared of Trinity. I'm scared of Trinity. I mean, it's like they've got it on their mind. It, Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of the Word of God. I was thinking the other day, Council of Nicaea. We mentioned that one time. When they condemned... The Council of Nicaea, Trinitarian Council meeting, condemned. Do you know there was not even one oneness there? If that was the same thing today as it was back then, or back then the same today, it would be Trinity against oneness, oneness against Trinity. Because you told you hear through the oneness the radio broadcast. And if they'd done that back then, the Roman church system, first thing they would have done in their council meeting was, we need to condemn the oneness doctrine in these preachers. But you know what they condemned? The only one they condemned was what was called Arianism. And the oneness tried to condemn that because it was condemned in history. Trying to side in with Rome. You know what Arianism taught? It taught that Jesus was a man. that served God. And that's what the Roman church system condemned then. It's the same. Jesus Christ is in that place as a mediator. And Paul plainly wrote, 
that Jesus Christ is able to save anybody to the uttermost that come to God if they come to Him. Because it says that He ever lives to make intercession, to pray for them. Just like Jesus said, if you'll let me keep my commandments, I'll pray the Father for you, which is God. Paul said, Hebrews 9, 24, he's in the presence of God for us. What's he doing there? He's not the Father himself. He's the Son of God, a man born of the Virgin Mary that has been given all power because he laid down his life. Life, uh, the resurrection came by man. That means something. It's not just a bunch of words in Paul's writing. When it says the, the resurrection of life came by man, it said death came by man. But it said also the resurrection of life came by man. Adam sinned and messed up and brought death penalty. Jesus obeyed God and, and come to a place that he was one with God and God raised him from the earth, put him in heaven as our high priest so when we want to call on our God, we can call upon our high priest. And he said, I, if you'll love me, just keep my commandments. I'll pray to God for you. For such a high priest became us who is holy, harmless. Now, Paul ain't saying we're the high priest. But such a high priest, this one right here, became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. That's when Jesus died on that cross. Tried to get around dying just like anybody would do. It's a human being. Finished up in his prayer said, God, in other words, I don't want to die this way in horrible death. But not my will, yours be done. And when he died, later on, then he, after he come back, he said, you go tell my brothers, Mary, you go tell my brothers, I'm going to send to my God and your God. I'm going up there with God. I'm going to be a high priest. He could have said that because that's what he is. I'm going to be a high priest. I'm going to intercede for everybody on the planet down here. If you'll call on my name, I'll be your high priest. And I'll pray to God for you. And Almighty God's got the power to deliver you in any situation. For such a high priest became us who is holy. He's harmless. He's undefiled. Separate from sinners made higher than the heavens who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up a sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people. See, Aaron, Aaron high priest had to, you know, you remember we talked about that before. They had to, the high priest had to have a, a veil around his uh, garment he wore. They jingle. When he moved around, you could hear him jingle. Then when he went in the Holy of Holies to the presence of God, he had a rope tied around his ankle. He would go in there and do the service of the tabernacle area in, the, in that holy place. If he did, if he, he, had, he got his sacrifices right, when he walked through that curtain where the presence of Almighty God lived with them then, God would have killed the man right there on the spot. I'm sure he probably done something like that. That's why the rope was tied around their ankle. If God, if that man wasn't right, God killed him. And they dragged him back. They go back there and get him. They dragged him back out. He's dead. I guarantee you the next time, the next high priest, listen, I don't know how they would have been. I'd been shaking in my shoes. Even if I thought I had everything right. That high priest had to put all that stuff, made do the certain sacrifices and everything. He prayed and prayed and prayed. Oh, I guarantee you he had a Pentecostal prayer. He prayed. He said, oh God, I don't want nothing wrong. Every sacrifice is right. Is this right? Is this right? Is everything right? Have I done things right? I don't want to go in there and die. He'd go in there and do the work. John the Baptist said, Daddy went back there. They stood outside praying. <laughs> Praise God. He come back up and said, I've seen a vision. Hallelujah. God was still there dealing with them then. 
But when Jesus died, He rent the temple. This high priest who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up a sacrifice, first for his own sins, then for the people's. For this he did once, Jesus did once, when he offered up himself. You won't hear this in UP service tomorrow in the uh, uh, Ephesians, what, 5 and 2? That Christ gave himself as a sweet manning Savior and a sacrifice to God. It says the same thing, Hebrews 9 14. He gave himself to God. He not only done that at the baptism, that's what baptism signifies that you're you can get rid of your old ways and go on God's ways. And Jesus done that even though he wasn't sinning. He said, we're suffering to be so now. we got to, you know, we've got to set an example here. So he was baptized, raised his head. Holy Ghost came down and claimed his body. Then he went through the ministry of life down here, done the ministry of that prophet. When he died on the cross, God raised him up, put him in heaven where the high priest seat is. This he did once when he offered up himself. Jesus gave himself. He could have run. Matter of fact, God gave him the choice. In the prayer, Hebrews, what, 7, Paul wrote down. He said that according to what Paul said, even though he was son and he feared, he was heard. He was heard in that prayer in Gethsemane. He, God listened to his prayer when he said, Father, let this cup pass to me. Jesus got in the prayer that God told him and said, If you will call for the angels, I will deliver you. But you had Moses, Elijah, angels talking to Jesus about what he must accomplish. Now here's what I saw they told him. If you do not go through with this, no human will be saved. All of it is up to you as a man. Not as God, a man. Then he got up there and he looked, he on that cross, he looked down at his mama. He didn't want his mama lost. He didn't want John lost, the apostles that were toughing it out. And all the others that didn't even know what they were doing. And he made up his mind in the Garden of Gethsemane, I'm going through with it. This he did once when he offered up himself for the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath. You're a priest forever after order majestic, the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son. It said here the word made the son. <laughs> which one is which here? The word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son is consecrated forevermore. Talking about Jesus Christ. Praise God. He's in heaven. Hebrews 8, 1 and 2. None of the things, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary. Jesus is a minister of God. Call of God to be a high priest. He's a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. God raised Jesus from the dead, put him in heaven at the high priest seat, gave him all power in heaven and earth. Whatever you do on earth, it's in your hands. That's why the Bible said later on, he delivers the kingdom back to God. And that ain't Trinity, that's the truth. My goodness, if I was a one, you got to not get scared. You can't shake of the word Trinity and tremble at it. It's just that God raised up a man and put him in heaven as a high priest and said, anybody wants to get saved, you got to talk to my son. And that ain't two gods. 
Jesus Christ said he has a God. Even in heaven, Jesus Christ said, I'll make you a pillar in the temple of my God. Well, he's in heaven. And since they the one God, that means he's a mediator. He's a minister. He's in heaven. He's our high priest. Praise God. That's it. Hallelujah. That's the truth. <laughs> That way Paul wrote it. That's the way the minister left it. Mr. Babylon skewed out systems that don't hold water. They go every which way with that and not have the truth. Machazdik wasn't God and Jesus himself wasn't God. It was call of God. Hebrews 5.10 said, or 5 and 5, I'm over there. Praise God. Let's go ahead and stand and get ready to close out.